Hi guys, welcome back to All Things Nautical. In this video, again, we'll be having a look at finding the time, approximate time, and also time to the nearest second in GMT and also zone time for lower meridian passage of the sun. And in this case, the question actually asks something extra. It also asks us to find the observed latitude at lower meridian passage. So the question works very similar to what we've done before with the addition basically of now the observed latitude. So as you can see, if we're looking over here at the information that's given to us, there's some extra info regarding the sextant site, and that'll obviously lead to finding um, an obsolete at a later stage. So the information looks very similar. Again, we've given us a date. So the date that the vessel or the date of the observer is 20, uh, the 22nd of April. Now, again, that's very important, so I'll be putting that in a red box again. This date and the actual date at the time, the ship's time, must be the 22nd of April. So this must correlate, and also down here, that then must correlate, so that must also be the 22nd of April. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into the almanac, and remember, because it's lower meridian passage, when we are observing the sun at lower meridian passage, we know that it is approximately midnight um, at your local meridian so the time given in the almanac is normally around noon so the time given in the almanac is for upper meridian passage of the sun so we will need to either subtract or add 12 hours in order to come back to um, the time for lower meridian passage so in this case we'll be entering the almanac on the 22nd of april we will observe a time in the almanac of 11:59, which we know if we apply 12 hours to becomes 20, uh, 2359 on that same date. Now we're in the Western Hemisphere, so because we're in the Western Hemisphere, our Western longitude that time needs to be added in order to get to GMT because G so GMT is at a later time, and that's also going to give us an indication if we're going to go later than 2359 on the 22nd that we're actually going to change dates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over here in a yellow box. So we can already see that that date is going to be the 23rd of April. So we're going to have a different date here. We need to keep track of that as we're carrying on with the calculation. So this western time, like I said, is then added. So we're going to take our longitude, 56 degrees and 34 minutes west. We'll convert that into time by dividing it by 15. And that's going to give us a change in time of 3 hours and 46 minutes. So we simply add that together. And that then gives us a GMT, approximate GMT of quarter to four in the morning, but it's the next morning, so it's on the 23rd of April at 3.45. Now, our zone is Quebec, so that means we will be subtracting four hours. So we'll subtract four hours. We're going from Greenwich back to the ship, so we're back into the Western Hemisphere, so minus four hours, and that then will bring us back to the ship's time which is now again the same date as that one up there, and it's also the same date as what we wanted in the question. So that's what we want to do with our dates here. We always want to make sure, irrespective of what GMT is, that when we end up at ship time, that that date and that date actually correlate, which in this case is fine. So we've got 23.45 on the 22nd of April. Now, we know that when we are dealing with a lower meridian passage, so we're going into the second part of the question here. We're dealing with lower mood in passage. We always have an LHA of 180 degrees. That will always be the case, irrespective of what body it is you are observing. So we're going from local, so from LHA to Greenwich. Um, that means we, for a western longitude, we will be adding. So we're going from local to Greenwich. So we're going to add our longitude up there, and that then will give us a GHA of... 236 34 so 236 degrees 34 minutes so what we need to now do is we now need to go into the almanac and we need to find a tabulated GHA a tabulated Greenwich hour angle um, which is closest to 236 34 and also less than that amount but now it's very important if we're going to be going into the almanac we must be entering the almanac on that date over here so it's a different date than the date of the ship We'll be entering on the, the, the date for, for GMT, which in this case is the 23rd of 
April. So I'll put that in there as well, just to give that indication. We're entering on the 23rd of April, looking for that tabulated GHA, which is closest to 236. So we find that the closest there is 225. So it's 225 degrees, 22.9 minutes. And that will be at 3 o'clock in the morning on the 23rd of April. So our increment over here, we can simply just subtract that. So we subtract that value there. That gives us 11 degrees and 11.1 minutes. That, of course, is a portion out of the maximum change in our angle from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. So we simply go back to the almanac. We have a look. The GHA, the tabulated GHA at 3 and the tabulated GHA at 4. What is the difference between the two? And in this case, it's again 15 degrees 0 0.1. Always be approximately 15. So that fraction there, that 11 degrees out of 15 degrees, that is going to give us the time increment uh, that we want to use over here. So that will then give us an increment of 0 hours, 44 minutes and 44 seconds, which we will of course add to that top value. And that then will give us a date and time at GMT, which is 03.44.44. So just about before quarter to four in the morning at Greenwich. So we can again take this 344.44, we compare it to our 345 up here, we can see that they're pretty pretty close there. So that gives us an indication that what we're doing is in fact correct. Now we're going from GMT. In order to find ship time, we're going from GMT back into the Western Hemisphere. I'm just going to change this D there to a Q. So we're going back into the Western Hemisphere, back into time zone Q. So therefore, we will be subtracting. And in that case, we'll be subtracting again the four hours. And that's now going to bring us back from the 23rd. That's going to bring us back to the previous date again. So that's going to bring us back into um, the 22nd of April, which will be 23.44.44 Q. I don't know why I have a D in there. That's going to bring us down to Q. And this 23.44.44 will obviously be very close to your 23.45 that you initially found there as an approximate time. Okay, so that answers the first part of the question. And that's pretty much what we've been doing in the last couple of videos, more or less the same thing. So we now have a time, a GMT, and also a ship's time for the sun at low meridian passage um, at that specific for that specific observation. Now, what we need to do next, in order to find an observed latitude, we need to work with a declination. So you can see over here I've started um, started working uh, a declination table there. Now, at that time, 3 o'clock in the morning on the 23rd of April, we can now go back into the table and we can simply read the declination at that time. So in this case, that declination is 12 degrees, 17.9 minutes north. We go down the table, down the column, we find that the correction, the D correction, um, the value there is 0 0.8. So for 44 minutes and 44, 44, uh, 44 seconds, that will be then an actual correction then of 3 quarters. So it's 0 0.6 out of 0 0.8. Now we're dealing with April, so the sun is still going up um, further into the northern hemisphere until about mid-June. So that's going to be added there. And that then will give us an actual declination of 12 degrees, 18.5 minutes north. Okay, so that declination there is what we wanted. And we know that this declination is measured from the equator up towards the heavenly body or the equinoctial up towards the heavenly body and that that means then that px will be from the pole down towards the heavenly body so from the equinoctial to the pole is 90 degrees so therefore 90 degrees minus 12 12 degrees 18.5 minutes is going to give us our value for px which in this case is 77 41.5 right so that px value we can just take note of because that's going to come down here at a later stage um, into the table. So I'll put that in there now. 77.41.5 and goes down there. All right. So if we're looking at our diagram here, this, this line diagram, 
we are in the center here and we basically got our northern horizon up there 90 degrees away and we got our southern horizon down here 90, 90 degrees away now we're in the northern hemisphere at approximately 79 degrees okay so we're about 89 degrees about 80 degrees north of the equator so the equator is way down here below us and the pole then this north pole this is the north pole that will be quite close to us it's about 10 degrees more or less 10 degrees away now the body we know is that lower meridian passage so it cannot lie on the same meridian um, as we are between the pole and the equator there where we are so it cannot lie on this meridian it must lie on the meridian on the other side of the world so it must be 180 degrees apart and therefore this body actually lies further north if we're looking north this body lies further north than the north pole okay so this body over here um, this zx value is actually then a combination of this px and pz All right so the first thing that we can take note of then is if we're looking at this diagram this portion over here qz is actually equal to this portion here pn and the reason for that is that from p to q so from the uh, equator to the pole we know is 90 degrees and we also know that from where we are to the horizon is 90 degrees so that means that this pz part here is common or common in both cases so that means that the remainder there pn and the remainder here qz must then of course be equal so qz which is what we essentially want we want to find qz or observed latitude is also equal to pn now if qz is equal to pn and we know that pxn lies over there then that also means then that qz must be equal to px plus nx now px we already actually already calculated there it is so we already have one half of what we want in order to find observed latitude so the only thing remaining for us to find then is nx now what is nx if we're looking at this diagram there if we're over here we're looking at the horizon that is our horizon and x of course is the body so it's the difference between our horizon and where the body lies so it's an angle measured from the horizon towards the body now we know that that is altitude sextant altitude so we're looking at the horizon we're measuring it up vertically towards the body and that of course will be altitude so all we need to find then is a corrected sextant altitude which is exactly what we're going to do here okay, so we're going to find ho and you will see I put in here it says it said that will be either nx or, or sx depending on which side in, in, of the world you are in this case of course it will be nx so nx is the same as ho my height observed okay so right in the beginning in the question that gave us uh, a sextant altitude of 2 degrees 30.9 minutes so 2 degrees 30.9 minutes the index error is 2.4 minutes on so that will have to be subtracted and that's going to be subtracted from there and that will give us then a corrected uh, an observed altitude of 2 degrees 28.5 minutes the height of i is 26 meters so from the almanac we can also get the correction for that which in this case will be nine minutes nine minutes subtracted from there and that's then going to give us an apparent altitude of two degrees and 19.5 minutes all right so now all we need to do is we need to find the total correction and this will be the total correction um, in april for lower limb remember we said that we'll always use the sun in lower limb because um, it just makes it a lot easier so at lower limb in april the total correction there is minus 0 0.8 minutes now we got to take note here that when we're dealing with that portion of the almanac it's at these low altitudes between 0 and 10 we actually need to interpolate so we got this value of minus 0 0 0.8 and we also have a value of minus 1.1 and that is then for a difference um, a very small difference then um, between this 2 degrees 15 and 2 degrees 20 minutes so we've got to interpolate there and this is very close to 20 so even after the interpolation we find that we still be using then um, minus 0, 0, 0.8 so that's where this comes from so I basically interpolated to get 0 0.8 so we don't need to go to a second or a third decimal we'll just stick to the one decimal values so it'll either be 1.1 or 1 or 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 
So in this case, this gives us a value of minus 0.8, which we will then, of course, subtract from our altitude there. And that's going to give us then an HO, an observed altitude of 2 degrees, 18.7 minutes. So that now we have HO. We have HO or NX, which is that portion there that we needed, that last section. So over here, we can simply now see that QZ, in fact, equals PX plus NX, which is 77.41.5 plus 2 degrees, 18.7. So we'll simply add those two up that we have over there. And that, of course, will then give us an observed latitude of 80 degrees, 00.2 minutes. So 80 degrees north. Now, when we started off, we knew that we were more or less 80 degrees north. So that's about four minutes apart from where we actually expected to be um, when we calculated our DR initially. So 80 degrees north is our latitude, observed latitude. And as we know, with any meridian passage, whether it's upper or lower, we know that the line of position will run east-west. So there we can see our direction, the LOP direction, which will be from 270 degrees true to 90 degrees true. So it's running in that east-west or west-east direction. So that basically answers the entire question. That is what we wanted to find. We wanted this time over here, which we did. And then we worked from our declination and our sextant site. In the corrected sextant site, we basically got to observe latitude and the direction of the LOP. So I hope that helped you guys out. And I will see you around next time.